Hello and welcome back to another R Graph Gallery tutorial covering distributions. Histograms are a good way to summarize a cloud of 100 data points and show that they follow a normal distribution. In this video, I explain how you can use the hist function from R's basic graphics package or the geom histogram function from ggplot2 to accomplish this. We will go through different function arguments, for example, the bin width or number of breaks or bins, and I will also demonstrate how to show two different distributions at the same time. You can overlay them, dodge them, or stack them on top of each other, and even mirror them. And as always, you can put them into individual plots with facet wrap, which can be useful for outlier detection. I will also cover how you can put histograms into the margins of the plot, and then I will show an example for histograms as age or population pyramids, which are a nice way to visualize the different age brackets US population has for males and females. Let's get started with the R code. Let's start with the hist function that's part of the base R graphics package. Here I created 100 normally distributed data points with the rnorm function and if you set the seed to 7 you'll get the same results as I do. We can plot them and even sort them from lowest to highest value. We could also plot the sorted values and then they will align like this. And when we use the hist function we have to specify x and we can tell it that we want to have 10 breaks which will create 10 bins for our 100 values. Depending on a distribution sometimes you will get 9 or 11 bins even though you specify 10. Now what the histogram is doing can be better understood if I use the cut function on the rnorm100 dataset with 10 breaks. So what the cut function is doing becomes more obvious when I include table to summarize the results. The cut function turns every value into a certain bracket and then table function tells you how many values fall within a certain range of values, similar to what the histogram is doing. You might remember from math class that the round parentheses indicates that this value is not included but everything that's smaller than this and the square brackets mean that minus 1.34 would be included and counted in this range. Now the 5, 11, 11, 20 is not the count numbers we got from the histogram and this is the case because the break ranges are different in the histogram than from the cut function. We could fix this if instead of giving breaks the argument 10, we can give it a sequence that goes from minus 2 to plus 3 in steps of 0.5 and then we get the same count numbers as the histogram. 4, 5, 17, 20, 20, 18, etc. The same idea can be applied to the hist function where instead of giving breaks a number of 10, you can also give it a specified range going from minus 2 to 3 in steps of 1. What you can also do is specify the exact position of the breaks, but what happens here is that because the break positions are different, the histogram will no longer report the frequency or the count of each instance, but the density. So this area now adds up to 1. One way to circumvent that is to specifically set the frick argument to true to turn the density back into counts showing the frequencies of each value. And now it tells you that there were 16 values bigger than 1 and smaller than 3 in the rnorm100 distribution. Let's continue with the geom histogram function from the ggplot package. As all geoms it needs a mapping that was already set in the ggplot function as the aesthetics mapping where we now show the price on the x-axis of various Airbnb prices. The data Airbnb is already piped into the ggplot function after filtering for prices below 300. The fill argument will set the color of the inside of the bins and the color argument will set the color of the boundaries and the alpha value gives some opacity to the filling. The lower the bin width, the higher the resolution of different prices. If we increase this to 15, distribution becomes a little bit lower in resolution but easier to capture and with bin widths of 50 then the prices from 75 to 125 would be collected in this bin. A few other arguments that might be useful, for example, is bins, where you can specify how many bins you want to see in your geom histogram. This overrides the bin width in case you specified it before. You can also address the closed arguments, where you indicate whether the right or the left edge should be included in the bin, which you might remember from the cut function. For the mirror histograms, we create a dummy dataset with 300 normally distributed values for the var1 column. By default, these would have a mean of 0 and a standard deviation of 1, and the second distribution gets a mean of 2 and is stored in the var2 column. Now we use the geom histogram function and specify density for the y-axis and minus density for the second variable which will be on the x-axis and then on the negative y-axis. If we change density to count and 
minus count. Instead of getting a probability of the curve, we now get the exact count of each value bin, which also means that for the geom label, we have to change the y position to minus 20 and 20, because before in density, those were set to 0.25 and minus 0.25. If you want to show multiple histograms in one graph, you have various different options. Here we create another dummy data set with two columns, one for type, which has 500 times variable one and 500 times variable two repeated. And for variable one, the 500 data points will have a mean of one. And for the second one, will have a mean of 4.5. So now this is organized in a long format where after point 500, this changes to variable two. Now it's important that in the ggplot and the aesthetics mapping, we specify the type column as the fill argument. So ggplot knows that there will be two different distributions. Without that, we would just get one histogram. And if you specify group as type in the ggplot aesthetics mapping, it now knows that there are two different histograms and with identity, it will overlay them one above the other. But when we use fill as type, specification, we automatically get two different colorings of the two different histograms. Now the two other options we can use for position would be dodge, where they then get dodged next to each other. With seam legend position equals none, we can get rid of the legend to make this effect a bit more visible. And we can also specify position as stack, and then each bin from one distribution gets stacked upon the other distribution in case they overlap. Now we will look into the case where you have more than two distributions. I used this probability dataset in the past where 46 respondents were asked to assign a probability to different texts. You can summarize the results simply by grouping by the different text elements, then calculate the mean of the value and arrange by descending mean. So almost certainly and highly likely were assigned the highest probabilities, almost no chance and highly unlikely the lowest and about even centered around 50%. When we specify fill equals text for the aesthetics mapping, we will make sure that each histogram gets its own unique color and with facet wrap based on text, each histogram will be plotted into its own individual graph. Now facet wrap by default will make the x and the y axis equal. So all of those range from zero to 100% and count from zero to 46. And the y axis has to go to a high value of 40 because for about even most respondents centered around 50%. If you want to free the y axis, and allow each count go to the max, all you have to do is specify scales free y, and now the y axis is allowed to differ for about even still going to around 45. But for distributions where many more values were allowed, it will only go up to like 10. This is also a good way for outlier detection because sometimes almost no chance or highly unlikely got very high probability is assigned. Same for little chance here and highly likely got a low probability here. In case you want to plot histograms in the margins of a scatter plot to show the distribution of individual variables, you can do this by using the GG Extra package. This is a scatter plot from the empty cars data set where the weight of the car is put on the x-axis and the miles per gallon on the y-axis with different colors and sizes for cylinders. If you store this plot in an object called p, you can make use of the ggmarginals function where you add a type to p, namely the histogram, showing now the distribution of different weights and mileages. With the size argument, you can say which area the main plot should occupy, making the margins histogram smaller. You can also change the color of the histograms. And for the x params, for example, you can specify the numbers of bins with the list bins argument. If you want to create an age or population pyramid, you can use similar code like this. Now this is dummy data from a uniform distribution, 500 values that go from 0 to 100 years. And then the sex is sampled 500 times as well with replacement. You then create a cut column where you want to have breaks from 0 to 100 in steps of 5. And then we will use corded flip. So the age cuts on the x axis will become the y axis. The fill sex argument will color male and female. And now it's important to mirror the male value values by multiplying the count of each bracket with minus one. And then to avoid having negative numbers on the negative y axis, you can change the labels to absolute values. Now I did get the values from the US Census 2020. 
with the current population of the United States in each age bracket, where I used mutate and case when to multiply the value by negative one in case it was males, to mirror it in the opposite side of the axis. And here you can say that it's more or less a rectangular distribution, also showing that women get older than men. If you include theme BW for black and white, you get a nice framing around the distributions. It's also important that you turn the age variable column into a factor based on unique age to get the order right. And then the facet share function is used instead of facet wrap, where based on gender and direction being horizontal, you can set up the visualization of two different distributions. If you don't set scales to three, then for each distribution, it would show the whole range of values. So it's important to include this to have the maximum distribution going only to zero and not to the other axis. This distribution is considered a slow growth distribution compared to countries like Afghanistan with a much younger population and a rapid growth of population overall and in countries like Japan with a very old population and not much offspring per individual showing negative growth or shrinking of the population. As always these examples came from the Rgraph gallery I will continue to go through the different visualizations over the next weeks. If you want to be notified of these videos, subscribe to the channel and hit the notification bell. Thanks for watching and see you for the next tutorial here at the Data Digest.